Hello everyone, this is Gene and I'm back with a new video. So this sort of dropped um, a few hours ago around the time when um, I was getting ready to leave work and come home, so I'm just covering it now. So uh, there's this uh, G4 host, this female G4 host, who is uh, getting a lot of attention for what I believe are the wrong reasons. Uh, she brings up, you know, sexism in gaming and... Uh, let's just say that while I think she brings up some decent points, her delivery is just so antagonistic that it makes it hard to be uh, sympathetic toward her position, even if she does have some valid concerns or make some good points. So I'm going to play the video first, or at least try to play it, and then I'm going to play it again and sort of respond you know, to certain things she says. Uh, as the video goes on, sort of give my uh, take on it. I hope everyone uh, is well this uh, January evening. At least it's it's nighttime here in New York City. So let's get to it. <laughs> it's coming from the mouth and experience of the reviewer reading that review. And that's not... Sexism in game. In joining G4. This is not where I thought we were going, but I'm here. I have no here. idea. I'm listening. Yeah. In joining G4, I was ecstatic to be part of something that I grew up watching as a child. But every time G4 is brought up in various channels, even in this YouTube channel, we have the chat in front of us. I can see you. Without a doubt, there will be backlash because I'm not as bangable as the previous host. What? It's somehow... Talk to him, Frost! It has somehow been expected that you can talk about how much you jerked off to women as a compliment. That's it's weird. not a compliment. It's weird. It's dehumanizing and it's weird. Women do not exist to be nice on the eyes for you. Morgan Webb, Olivia Munn did not exist to be nice on the eyes for you. Hey, she cooking, y'all. And that's just <laughs> obvious sexism. You don't need to explicitly objectify women or declare that you hate women to be sexist. Just go ahead and check out Thorne's latest meltdown on Twitter for some spark notes. Now, here at X-Play, our reviews are written and produced by a team of people. There are too many games for one person to shoulder the burden. So we divide and conquer. And when we use language like we or I, that's the reviewer. That's coming from the mouth and experience of the reviewer reading that review. You. And that's not to say that Gerard, TBH, Adam, or myself don't contribute to the reviews. We absolutely do. But it'll always be in varying degrees and take a whole team behind us. That's why we're X-Play and not Adam-Play. We have done the experiment and controlled for the variables. Adam will read a script written by the same writer that I will read the other half of the script for, but I'll be the one flamed. And yeah, it also happens to Gerard and TBH, but that doesn't discount the sexism of how it happens to me when it does. Both things can be true, that there is a general hatred of any change that isn't Adam, and that all receive special flame just for being a woman. And I wish I could turn the camera around so that you could see the incredible team that make X-Play. Half of our producers and writers are women. Emily, Abby, Megan, Joe, Jake, Zipper, Gabby. It goes on and on and on. Former writers that are now on ATOS like Vanessa. When you're in our DMs or on those YouTube comments or in Twitch chat right now, those reactionary threads thinking that I'm somehow ruining your your current X-Play experience because you can't objectify me how you previously did to Morgan, or that I'm somehow less qualified to speak on something, but you can't quite put your finger on why, even though I'm reading the exact same script as Adam, but you have no problem with he's part of it, you're letting your unconscious biases ruin my day and you're gatekeeping the gaming space. So maybe for 2022, we'd be a bit nicer, a bit more self-reflective, and we enjoy the fact that people are working hard to make free content for you. If you don't like it, don't watch it. Peace. Can I just say 
I feel bad for you? Um, That's a, I don't need to go. I don't need to cross. I, I don't need to go. Don't, don't. We're good. I'm good. I'm good. That was, that was the best it's ever gonna get out of the, out of us. I don't need to go. Thank you for. All right, so that's the original clip. It actually played decently for once. It very rarely happens for me. <laughs> so that was the original clip. And now I'm going to play it again, and this time I'm going to, you know, stop it in certain areas to address what she says because uh, there's just a lot to unpack here. I, I hate to use such a term. It's very passe and played out, but it really is, right? I have a lot of different takes and views on the things that she said because I do believe that there are some real issues she brings up and concerns that should be addressed at the same time and like I said earlier this presentation this angry aggressive antagonistic you know coming at the audience type thing I don't think is is going to uh, help her cause so let me play it again and like I said I'll I'll respond to certain elements of it as I go on. Sexism in gaming. In well, that's a hornet's nest. You, you walked right into a hornet's nest. So don't complain about getting stung if you decide to take a stick and whack the damn hornet's nest. Hornets don't like to be disturbed, neither do gamers. <coughs> Joining G4. Yeah. This is not where I thought we were going, I know, but I'm here. I have I'm no here. idea. I'm listening. Yeah. In joining G4, I was ecstatic to be part of something that I grew up watching as a child. But every time G4 is brought up in various channels, even in this YouTube channel, we have the chat in front of us, I can see you, without a doubt, there will be backlash because I'm not as bangable as the previous host. It's somehow... Talk. Well, first of all, how sexually attractive you are to individual people is a subjective matter, right? But you bringing this up makes you look incredibly insecure. And this is not the first time in this rant, as you heard, that she brings this up. What does your appearance matter, right? This sounds like you are, in a sense, upset that the audience, that which would be predominantly male, and at least uh, I don't know what type of demographic G4 caters to now, but I know that back when, like, the mid-2000s, when I was a teenager, older teenager and a young adult in college, they catered to, basically, a lot of the guys that I knew in college, right, you know, sort of, you know, hor hormonal, you know, young men, you know, dude bros type of thing, like, frat boy uh, types, especially with shows like Attack of the Show and all that. So, you don't make yourself look good here, and you don't help your argument by lashing out at the audience because, from your perspective, they don't see you as sexually attractive as Olivia Munn or uh, Morgan Webb. It has somehow been expected that you can talk about how much you jerked off to women as a compliment. That's it's weird. not a compliment. It's weird. It's okay. Okay. Fair point, but two things. Number one, um, a lot of dudes say that just to sort of antagonize you. I remember when I was in college and, and, and guys would say things just to be gross or just like gross me out. I would usually just roll my eyes and just remind them that talk like that is exactly why they don't have a girlfriend, right? And then that would usually get, get them to shut up. But especially when she talks about specifically um, uh, revealing to someone that you uh, engage in self-love, I guess she forgot the 1990s uh, song uh, by the Divinals, right? I don't want anybody else. When I think about you, I'll leave the rest of your imagination. Right, but continuing. 
dehumanizing and it's weird. Women do not exist to be nice on the eyes for you. Morgan Webb, Olivia Munn did not exist to be nice on the eyes for you. Well, here's the problem with her argument here. While it's true in a strictly objective sense, right? You work in entertainment. You are a presenter. You are a host. You are supposed to be presentable to the outside audience, which aesthetically speaking, uh, Morgan Webb and <coughs> Olivia Munn were, right? And in particular, when it comes to Olivia Munn, right, she went on to become an actress and was in the X-Men Apocalypse film from a few years back, playing Psylocke of all characters, who anyone familiar with the comics or the cartoons would tell you is noted for being as beautiful as she is deadly, which is to say very on both counts, and was, was I think, when she became Psylocke, right? Because she was originally Betsy Braddock. There's a lot of history here. But um, when she was Psylocke, like, first introduced to the X-Men, right, she was trying to seduce Scott Summers, right? So beauty and sexuality has sort of always been a part of Psylocke's character. And let's, let's, let's just look at the Wikipedia pages briefly for Morgan, for Olivia Munn and Morgan Webb, right? Lisa Olivia Munn is an American actress and former television host. After interning at a news station in Tulsa, she moved to L.A., where she began her professional career as a television host for the gaming network G4, primarily on the series Attack of the Show from 06 to 2010, and then she was a correspondent on The Daily Show from uh, 2010 to 2011, right? And then it mentions her, her TV work and all this other stuff. She worked as an actress in the late 2000s on uh, various roles, right? Uh, she was in the superhero film Iron Man 2. I did not know that. Uh, Magic Mike. And she, is, she starred in Deliver Us from Evil, Mordecai, X-Men Apocalypse as Psylocke, right? So... <laughs> whatever you think of Olivia Munn as an actress, it's clear <clears throat> like many actresses, she used G4, right, as a springboard for her career. A career she has made by being, at least in part, very easy on the eyes. Right? And then you look at Morgan Webb. Right? It says here, Morgan Webb uh, is a former co-host and senior management producer of the G4 show X-Play. She was previously the host of Web Alert and a monthly common columnist for the U.S. edition of FHM. For those who may not know what FHM is, it's an acronym for For Him Magazine, a men's lifestyle magazine. If you've ever seen men's lifestyle magazines, right, most famous of which being Playboy, right, you'll know that they tend to feature very attractive women, right, in very sexy outfits and very uh, sexy poses, right, on the cover to attract a male audience. We're talking about G4 in the early to mid-2000s who were openly courting you know, sort of the Xbox dude bro, again, you know, older teen, young adult, college male of the time. So, uh, yeah, part of the reason why Morgan and Olivia were chosen at that time is because of their visual appeal to young men. And in Olivia's case, she literally turned it into an acting career and was in a big blockbuster movie, two of them in fact, but she especially had played a larger role as Psylocke, right? But it says here for Morgan Webb, right? Occupation, television presenter, right? Producer, television presenter, is a person who introduces or hosts television programs, often serving as a mediator for the program in the audience, right? Nowadays, it is common for people who garnered fame in other fields to take on this role, Right? So she, like many other people, used this role to advance her career. And that's fine. But let's not act like 
her being conventionally attractive wasn't a factor, and especially a factor in, in Olivia's case, she turned it into an acting career, or that it's a bad thing. Oh, Lord, come on. Don't do this to me, Twitter. Ah. I'm sorry, people. I'm going to try to set it back up. I'm going to pause this and try to get it set back up. Annoying. All right, so let's let's try to continue from where we left off. And it's weird. Women do not exist to be nice on the eyes for you. Morgan Webb, Olivia Munn did not exist to be nice on the eyes for you. Hey, she cooking, y'all. And that's just obvious sexism. You don't need to explicitly objectify women or declare that you hate women to be sexist. Just go ahead and check out Thorne's latest meltdown on Twitter for some spark notes. Now, here at X-Play, our reviews are written and produced by a team of people. There are too many... All right. This is something I want to address because she brings this up a few times as the video goes on. How, right, the, their reviews or what they say are written by by other people and written by a team of people. Now, I want to be clear. I understand that, right? It's a TV show, right? It's a professional production. They're going to have people who write scripts, right? And to her point here, to her point here, right, it would be impossible for a small team of people to cover all the video games coming out and all the video game drama and all the video game news and everything. So I understand... You know, what she's, I, I, I can understand, I should say, what she's talking about when it, when it comes to this whole issue of, you know, uh, you know, who's doing the review, right? And, you know, whose opinion are you really getting when you read an article written by them or when they present a, a particular piece or spotlight or highlight or whatever to the viewer? Right, I understand that that makes sense, right? The right that that it is this very polished team effort. That's that to me is not a problem, so long as people are uh, honest about it. But I will say this much, because she brings this up a few times as she goes on. If you keep emphasizing the fact that people write your lines, that people write a script for you, and you're reading from that script. How am I, or why should I, believe that now, in this instance, you're shooting from the hip and speaking from the heart, and nobody's feeding you lines and telling you what to say? Why should I believe that you're being that you're speaking honestly now, when you're acknowledging that in pretty much any other instance, you've been reading from a script, you've been reading written, pre-approved comments? Pre pre approved uh, um, uh, information, right? So if you want me to believe that you're honest and you're speaking honestly, you may not want to keep emphasizing the fact that people literally feed you lines and give you a script to read. games for one person to shoulder the burden so we divide and conquer and when we use language like we or i that's the reviewer that's coming from the mouth and experience of the reviewer reading that review and that's not to say that gerard tbh adam or myself don't contribute to the reviews we absolutely do but it'll always be in varying degrees and take a whole team behind us that's why we're x play and not adam play we have done the experiment and controlled for the variables adam will read a script written by the same writer that i will read the other half of the script for but i'll be the one flamed and yeah it also happens to gerard and tbh but that doesn't discount the sexism of how it happens to me when it does okay here's the thing right she's saying that she acknowledges right in this clip here that 
<coughs> her male co-hosts also get flack for the things that they say. But that she gets flack and, and she even says, right, two things can be true. Is that they can be flack and that when she gets flack, it's sexism. Well, first of all, my question is, you don't provide any examples of the supposed sexism that you're being subjected to. Same way you don't provide examples in this clip, at least. Maybe there were examples before. Maybe there were examples after. I don't know. I'm solely evaluating this clip. But you don't show anything in this clip of the type of comments people have made about you or made toward you, whether it be about your appearance or about uh, whatever part of the script that you're, you're reading from, right? How can you argue that it's sexism when you acknowledge that the men get criticized, but then when you get criticized, it's sexist? I, I could imagine it's sexist if, for example, they got criticism and you didn't, or if you got criticism and they didn't, but right now you're, you're just telling me that, 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 that it is sexist without giving me any examples or any evidence of proof as to why. And perhaps it's my profession weighing in on me, but I am way too jaded to just take your word for it, my dear. <laughs> <clears throat> Both things can be true that there is a general hatred of any change that isn't Adam and that all fair fair criticism there is a general hatred of change people don't do well with with change however you also have to take into account why these changes are made a lot of changes especially in the media today especially in geek media, are made, I would say, to antagonize, to antagonize fans, right? It has a twofold um, purpose, to antagonize the fans who were always there, and then to reach out to a very small fan base who are probably not going to purchase the product, right? So you have a point about, yeah, people don't like change, and yeah, Sessler is, you know, a uh, sort of OG for G4 and X-Play, although um, his Twitter is just plain toxic and he makes stupid, crass comments about Republicans because it's the cool thing to do. But fair point about him being a, a, a part of X-Play, right, in that people do not adjust well to change. Fair, fair, fair criticism. <coughs> I'll receive special flame just for being a woman. And I wish... But how do you know that? How do you know that this special flame is specifically because you are female? Again, you don't provide any examples or proof of this. And I'm not prone to believing people just because they say something. I could turn the camera around so that you could see the incredible team that make X-Play. Half of So why don't you? So why don't you? We all know that, 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 that this is a production, right? We all know it's a professional environment. This is not, you know, like what I'm doing right now, literally recording this from my home halfway in the dark, right? You're telling me that no one thought to get a little bit of interview data, not interview data, right? But like those, those like little, you know, skits or the little like like moments where the, where they'll have like a a behind the scenes person talk about their experience, right? That type of thing. You're telling me no one thought to do that. No one thought to even just post the pictures of the various people who are behind the scenes and, you know, give them a little acknowledgement. You talk about how you wish you could turn the camera around, but literally nobody thought to use Google Photos. Nobody thought to just 
take some photos and just put them up there and, sh and say, hey, here's our team that you don't usually see. Again, makes, makes it very difficult for me to believe in the sincerity of your argument. <coughs> or rather, rant. Half of our producers and writers are women. Emily, Abby, Megan, Joe, Jake, Zipper, Gabby. It goes on and on and on. Former writers that are now on ATOS like Vanessa. When you're in our DMs or on those YouTube comments or in Twitch chat right now, those reactionary threads thinking that I'm somehow ruining your current X-Play experience because you can't objectify me, how you... Okay, first of all, again, this, this whole, you know... Uh... What what she just said, right? You know, claiming that that I'm ruining things because you can't objectify me. Again, it reeks of a certain insecurity, right? Almost that she wishes that the the um, audience would objectify her, or find her as appealing and attractive as Olivia Munn and and uh, Morgan Webb. But here's the thing, honey, woman to woman. I know, logically speaking, that this video is not directed toward me. I know it's not about me. I know you're not yelling at me. Yet I feel attacked. Yet I feel antagonized. Yet I want to stop this video right now because I've listened to you several times and you have pissed me off every single time. You are talking, you are yelling so loud that I cannot hear what you say, or rather, I am not inclined to listen to you. It's very difficult for me to listen to you. Again, you're a host, you're a presenter. Present. This is not the way to get people to listen to you or to uh, acknowledge your grievances or concerns, which again, you have some points, like the way you know men at times can be very uh, just indecent around women at times, right? Yeah, that that can be frustrating. That can be annoying. I was around a lot of that when when I was a younger woman. But again, this overly angry, aggressive, no fun, you know, feminist uh, persona that you're putting on, right? Because if everybody plays a role. You talk several times about a script. You're playing a role too, and you're playing a role that is not going to. Um, endear you to your audience. You're playing the heel in this, in this situation, right? For those who don't know pro wrestling, the heel is the bad guy, right? And one of the jobs of the heel of the bad guy is to antagonize the audience, right? Is to get heat. Is to get the audience to boo them, dislike them. You're doing a great job of that. I'm just wondering if that was what you were actually intending to do because if it wasn't, you've shot yourself in the foot royally with this because you're not helping your cause with this rant you're just making even people like me who want to be sympathetic to you, toward you who want to hear what you have to say completely unsympathetic toward you and not want to hear what you say anymore previously to DeMorgan, or that I'm somehow less qualified to speak on something, but you can't quite put your finger on Well, I have no idea whether or not you're qualified to speak on something, because you don't give me any examples of your work. So how can I make that evaluation? ...on why, even though I'm reading the exact same script as Adam, but you have no problem with that's no justification. Again, all you're all you're establishing is that everything you say on this show is not an original thought. Part of it, you're letting your unconscious biases ruin my day and you're gatekeeping the gaming space. First of all, honey, my 
unconscious biases have got nothing to do with you. You have completely earned my, my bias with this video. I'm not judging you because you're a woman. I'm judging you because you're annoying me. You could have the best take of takes. You could be the smartest person in the world. You could be the most experienced gamer in the room. And I don't want to listen to you talk anymore. Maybe that's the problem here. Maybe, just maybe, the problem is you and the role that whether you realize it or not, you have agreed to play. Right? And I get it. No one wants to be trolled. Nobody wants to uh, experience, you know, sort of unwanted attention or behavior. I can certainly understand that. I've gotten my fair share of unwanted male attention especially when I was a younger woman. But again, this is not the way to um, deal with it. Because now it just looks like you're attacking just everyone, right? Not specific individuals who are bad actors, but just everybody. That does not help your case here, right? Even if I allow myself to believe in your righteous anger, your, your antagonistic, overly aggressive approach is completely off-putting. <laughs> so maybe... About gatekeeping the uh, gaming space. It tends to be people like you who gatekeep the gaming space more than the dude bros with the... Um, uh, inappropriate comments. Not to say that inappropriate comments should be something that are tolerated, right? Again, I've told off my fair share of dudes in my life, but it's like if I had to choose between a dude who says, a, say like a dirty joke and a woman like her, I would choose the dirty joke dude every time because he's just being a fool. You're pissing me off. So maybe for 2022, we'd be a bit nicer, a bit more... You go on a three-minute rant about how people are mistreating you and, and how you're upset about how they don't view you as bangable as the previous hostesses, and you go on this attack of an entire audience, and then you want to go into, well, for 2022, we should be nicer. I agree, but you should probably pick up the flag and lead the way. Set a good example, because this is a terrible one, right? That's the thing. First impressions are lasting impressions, and you only get one chance to make a first impression. And at least for me, you have not made a very good first impression. Maybe, maybe it's just you're upset, right? Maybe you're playing a role. I don't know. But again, as somebody who wants to hear you, I also want you to shut the hell up because you're annoying me. <laughs> Self-reflective, and we enjoy the fact that people are working hard to make free content for you. It no such thing as free. No such thing as free. There may not be any monetary price, right? But channels regularly pitch their Patreon or other sort of <coughs> um, platform where where people can, you know, donate monthly or they ask for subscriptions because, you know, that's how they make money, right? Getting enough views and subscriptions, interactions, right? And at the very least, you're paying if nothing else, with your time. So, no, it's not free content. Please stop. <laughs> if you don't like it, don't, don't watch, watch it. it. Pick ah. Ah. The classic, if you don't like it, don't watch it. Sounds very similar to what Kelly Sue 
the DeConnick said about her comics several years ago, right? If you don't like my politics, don't buy my books. Well, guess what? That's exactly what people did. People didn't like her politics and didn't buy her books. And even she had to acknowledge, I think, of two years ago in 2019, that comics weren't, weren't doing nearly as well as they used to, right? Then there's also, you know, people like uh, Brie Larson who have said this, right, about A Wrinkle in Time, right? Her comments about how the movie wasn't made for 40-year-old white men. Or who was, I think it was Elizabeth Hurley a few years ago, maybe a year or two ago, when they, when they did the whole, you know, Charlie's Angels remake that no one asked for. She said something similar, and the film bombed, right? This is not the type of messaging you should want to put out. Well, I can certainly understand, you know, saying, look, if you don't, if this isn't for you, don't watch it. This is, again, something you probably shouldn't say on a screen, right, for a video clip that's got almost a million views now, right? You've effectively told close to, let's say, because views, right, you can view a video multiple times and each view counts, right? It doesn't mean that. Uh, 991,000 people have literally sat here and watched this, but I would say a fairly close amount have. So you've told at the very best hundreds of thousands of people and it's quickly climbing to a million people effectively to piss off. Again, not a good look, not a good move. Even in pro wrestling, right, they're, they're not going to tell the audience to literally leave the building, right? You can't have that because then people don't come back, right? <laughs> you have to make money. You have to have a... Re people... You, you have to make sure people are willing to come back and willing to spend their money and time on you. You're pushing people away. At least in pro wrestling, the job of the heel is to make the people want to come back so that hopefully the face will, you know, beat the tar out of the heel, right? And they'll see the heel get their comeuppance. But you... You're just actively pushing people out. You talk about gatekeeping, and then you literally tell hundreds of thousands of people, if you don't like it, just leave. <laughs> okay. And when at least some of those people take your advice, don't make another video in a few weeks crying about how views dropped and then blaming that on sexism. Blame yourself if that should happen. There is no peace. There is no peace here. You have not made peace. You have declared war. Have fun. I feel bad for you. Um, That's a I don't need it. Here's what I find interesting about this. Right? For all of the men, you know, clapping like seals. Right? Sessler and these two other men. In this nearly four minute screed that she goes on, she doesn't say one word about any of these men, in particular Sessler, or anybody at G4 supporting her or encouraging her or defending her from these, you know, mean, unkind, supposedly sexist comments that she's been getting from the chat, right? That's what sort of stands out to me. They're clapping and they're, you know, showing you know, performative. It's performative. That's the term I'm looking for, right? It's very performative, but it's like, why in nearly four minutes doesn't she say one thing about, hey, Sessler, you know, uh, stood up for before me, you know, when this person said this thing or that thing happened, right? Not one word about any of her co-workers, right, standing up for her to defend her. Now, some may say, well, you know, if they did that, there would be white knighting. And here's the thing. While they probably would get criticisms of white knighting, white knighting it's not just helping somebody, right? Defending someone who needs defending. White knighting 
is when you are defending a woman who didn't ask for your help and there's no problem here, right? In this case, if the abuse is even a quarter of as bad as she describes it here, uh, if they were my coworker, they'd be like, where the hell were you? Why didn't you, you know, stand up and say anything? Why didn't you help me? Why didn't you defend me? So I actually do find the absence of such um, anecdotes very interesting. Kill yourself and kill yourself. Go! I don't need to cross. I don't need to go. Go! Don't! We're good. I'm good. I'm good. That was that was the best it's ever gonna get out of the, out of us. I don't need to go. Thank you for. No, this is probably the worst. If she's truly being harassed or feels like she is, this is the worst thing she could have done, because what she has shown is that the comments that she gets, the attention or lack thereof, uh, that she gets gets to her. It gets a rise out of her, right? This was a nearly four minute uh, rant, right? Where she pretty much shows the world, I have thin skin. <laughs> Again, this is not something that has made her look sympathetic at all in my eyes. And again, I don't, I don't know her, I don't know what she does. I'm not, I don't have an ill will toward her, but again, if she was trying to bring serious issues to light or issues with the way, or I should say sincere grievances about the way she's been treated by the chat to light, this has not helped her. If anything, this in an odd way reminds me of the current <coughs> Jack Murphy situation, right? Jack had a bad moment. He blew up at Sydney Watson because she read a super chat and then, and in the super chat, Someone asked about uh, some article uh, Jack had written about his sex life, right? Several years ago, he curses her out. Instead of just letting it die, right, people started kneeling Jack about his sexual escapades, which I will admit is just immature, right? Got a bunch of grown men acting like they're 17 again when they're pushing 40. But if not older. But on top of that, Jack kept overreacting and overreacting and overreacting. And every time he overreacted, right, every time that the people antagonizing him saw that they were getting a rise out of him, they just continued and continued and continued and continued. Right? As the saying goes, don't let them see you sweat. So again, I want to believe that at least some of this is true. And like I've said, there are a few points where I could I am sympathetic toward her. In particular, some of the comments from from young horny guys and, and other ones. But again, for all of all of my agreement or all of my my desire to at least try to be sympathetic toward her plight. She is so antagonistic that it makes it very difficult for me to put my own sour feelings uh, uh, aside, right? It's hard, it's, it's, it's hard to ask people for help if you're yelling at them, right? <laughs> like I said before, she's yelling so loud, it's hard to hear what she says, which is sad because I do think somewhere buried in there are real issues of concern. But how do you address them when you're playing the angry feminist and you're yelling at your audience who you need, one, to stop with their behavior, right, if, 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 if that's one of your main issues, and two, to continue to watch your show. If anything, like the Jack Murphy situation, this is going to inspire the people who antagonize her to antagonize her more because again, they'll want to see if they can, they can get a rise out of her again. So, all in all, in my opinion, not a good look, not a good idea. They shouldn't have posted this online. I saw something in, in the comments on Twitter 
where she talks about how everybody was was you know ranting and that you know Adam had a rant and some other person had a rant. It doesn't matter. Their rants aren't 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 the ones being promoted by G four. Their rants aren't the ones that have almost a million views. Yours are. You wanted attention. G four wanted attention. You've got it. Have fun. Anyway, that's the video. I know it's a very long one. Leave it to me to, to take a less than four minute clip and turn it into a 45 minute video. But um, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, please let me know what you think. And I will see you all in the next one. Have a good day and night wherever you are. Bye.